Buck Joe Walter in the house and uh, Buck, obviously, I mean, uh, one of the best managers when you did it to, in your day. And we're, we're pleased you're, you're a part of our family here. And as a manager, obviously, you know that rule book inside and out. And, and got, got you. if not, you got to sell it. Sometimes you go out there, you're not real sure, Jimmy. And you know that guy in blue ain't real sure either. You can see it in his face every once in a while. So you got to sell it. Now, I don't know everything, but you, you need to try to. Well, well let's talk about a couple that, that jumped out at you in terms of, you know, hey, people might not actually know what the situation is in, in our, our rule review oh, here. Okay, you got a ball swinging bunt, bunt down the third baseline okay. that ends up off the line, but the ball is hanging over the line. So it's not touching the line, but say the left part of the ball in this case is hanging over the line, but it's not touching the line. Fair or foul. So it's the ball is it's not touching the line, but the ball itself is a part of it that's hanging over the line. So not that situation because that ball was all the there's, line. There's one happened earlier in the year down the third yeah. baseline where the ball. I'm going to say it's foul. You're going to say it's foul? Yes. Okay. What, Jimmy? I'm going to say fair because I'm a hitter. It's fair. <laughs> it it's is. Fair, even though it's not touching the line. Think about that where if you hit a ball down the foul line, it hits a foul pole. Right. And glances off the left side. You know, part of it is hanging kind of, ha I don't know if that's a good uh, comparison, but the ball is hanging over the line, so it's fair. So, so part, okay, so even though it's suspended in the air a little bit, uh, that part of the ball that was hanging over the line is fair. Well, okay. now, did you, now, did you know that in, in, in all these situations we're going to go over? No, it's one of the things you learn in the minor leagues. Somebody says, you've oh. never seen that before. Well, you haven't been in owning out of New York. You haven't been in winter ball. You haven't been in instructional right. league. Right. I saw a triple play where the ball never hit leather. We'll talk about that one day. Oh. But go ahead. So, uh, all right, and then another one here, uh, the players who make plays and then end up fall, falling Okay, there, the there's two thoughts here. It, you know, if a man's on second base and there's a pop fly hit and the infielder's going in, if his momentum carries him into the dugout, okay, and he leaves his feet, everybody advances 90 feet. A lot of people don't know that. Okay. But if he stays on his feet, he's got to come out of the dugout to throw. You cannot throw from in the dugout. People say, what are you discussing at home play? Guy catches the ball, momentum goes into the dugout. So I tell our guys, Jimmy, if one of our guys catches the ball and comes in the dugout, be sure he doesn't leave his feet. If the other guy from the other team comes in there, see if you can give him a little help leaving his feet <laughs> as he comes in because that's 90 feet for everybody else. You know, just a little nudge there. A little but, bit. But, you can't, but you cannot throw the ball from the you dugout. You have to come out of the dugout to throw. Okay. All right. All right. What about that? What about well, well, along that line okay, now? Go ahead. Somebody's coming over to your dugout. I see it all the time. And he's going to catch a ball, and if it's your guy, you get out of his way in the dugout. Right. But if it's the other guy, hold your ground because you know it's just like in the stands. If you reach in there, whoever you bump into, it's just tough luck. Once right. you go past that perimeter of, of the dugout right. the fencing, so you tell your guys if your guy's coming over here, get out of the way, make sure he doesn't get hurt. If the other guy's coming over, make sure you stay right on that rail and hold your ground that, so that he can't reach in and catch your guy's pop up. That is that. That's not something you would practice, but what? Of course it is. It you is. talk okay. about okay. it. No, so you know, every day, what's the four every of day in spring training, okay. we would take one rule, as Jim knows, it, and we'd go over it. You know, two men standing on the base at the same time, who's out, who's safe? You know, the guy who originally has, has it. Uh, pop fly, uh, 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 infield fly rule, okay. what is it? There's a there's hundred of them. You can spend some time. And over the course of the season, if your guys understand the rules a little bit better, it, it, it'll it'll give you a game or two here. And there. you'll do it right there on the field. I mean, in practice, spring training. Well, we used to do it inside. inside. We, you know, we go over something in the morning before we go out, and we'll just take a rule. And it's always fun because the players take a lot of ownership in it. So I was never in spring training with Buck. I got traded midway. But Buck has always been known for really being one of the most organized, oh, yeah. detailed yes, managers yes, yes. that ever played this game. Yep. And just in life in general, like, you know, to to be a veteran who later in my career had a chance to come and be with Buck, it was an absolute pleasure. And I got to D8, so I was really on the bench right. and would watch little things during the game. When somebody's really good, you embrace that. Not only is it teaching you, but for me as a veteran, I can pass that down to like it. younger players. Like it. And that's that's the importance of having a a veteran manager and also veteran players that you work together and, and well, you can do that. It also make you kind of paranoid because he's one of those guys. You go, <laughs> hey, any questions? Jim, tell me does this. You go, oh no, <laughs> oh no, I, I better know this. Couple come, come more, couple more. Okay, don't want to run out of time. All right. Can a catcher use his mask to stop? A lot a of people don't realize ball? this. He, I would say well, no. Okay, what do you think, that? Jimmy? 
Can you take it and scoop it up? Like uh, that. I'm going to guess yes. No, watch this. Here's an example. Short wild pitch, uh, semi-pass ball. He takes his, his mask, scoops it into his glove. That's a no-no. That's 90 feet for everybody. You know, it'd it be just like uh, grabbing a rake from the, the tool, from the uh, ground screw there and raking it into your glove. And that, that happens, by, and you better make sure your catcher knows that, because a lot of time when the ball's back at the screen and they're carrying the glove in their hand, they'll just reach down and scoop it in there. All right. This last one that we're going to get to here, I, I, I cheated a little bit, because I had heard you talk about this play when it happened. You weren't here. We're talking about Manny? I, yes. So, and, 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 oh, so, are you going to get me going? How the, long we got? The, but when I said this, this is a great and play. I said this is something that you taught and you, and you thought was I'm not the only one. Right, but and people said people were getting on me. They're like, Buck didn't teach that. I'm like, I'm telling you. What's dirty Buck about this? Man, right. Manny went in and told one of the coaches to text me and tell him how great that play was, Jimmy. So right. so Manny slid. Albert went through Vina. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Think about that. Right. Like right. he slid. At least he slid. Right. But, but, but your point is, I mean, just take people through why you, well, first of wait, all, okay. Is that something that you, if, if you're running, you are, you, are you running uh, to home play? Are you supposed to just let the catcher tag you? Right. If he's blocking your path, he's blocking Manny's path. You invite that tag. That's the way you teach it. Right. And this is a great base running play. Nobody's going to get Jason, hurt. can we run it back? I've seen, that, that I've seen JJ Hardy do it to Dustin Pedroia, but nobody talked about that. You know, the second base, and there's a way to teach it. The other way is you need to side straddle this guy, not get right in the middle, because once he goes into the line, he's fair game. You know, obstruction and interference, two different things. If he's trying to tag you once he's caught the ball, he's fair game. What's the difference between that and somebody blocking a, a bag halfway to third base? You run through him. But this isn't a dirty play. Anybody that does it, boy, I'd like to play against you for a living because we'd, okay. <laughs> and that, that's probably something I think when people see that, they think about some of the things that Manny. That's why. I, I got it. Yeah, but. Yeah, and, but, but. That's a play that actually, it's, I just want to make sure it's, it's a baseball yeah. player. That's a base running Smart. play. And they went on to score two or three runs yeah. after that play yes, where they, they wouldn't have. Yes, they did. All right, they're good Not stuff. that I care about it. All right, okay. rule review with the buck.